What would happen to music theory if we had 31 notes instead of 12? Let's explore that by reconstructing an interval that has been lost to the annals of history. This is a normal 12 note keyboard. The distance from C to D is what we would call a whole tone in traditional theory. If we split that whole tone in half, you get a semitone. Split it in half again, and you'll find you can fit four equal quarter tones in the space of that one whole tone. But what if we split that same whole tone five different ways instead? You'll get what is called the fifth tone, or historically, the diesis. This diesis does not exist on modern keyboards. However, for a very brief time long ago on some keyboard instruments, it did. The diesis allows us to create two new kinds of semitones that split the whole tone unevenly, which means that enharmonic equivalents like C sharp and D flat are now two distinctly different notes. This foray into microtonality, contrary to certain TikTok music scholars out there, is actually nothing new. Going back through the history books, we'll find the likes of Aristotle arguing that the diesis is to music what the letter is to speech. Likewise, we'll find in the writings of St. Thomas Aquinas that the diesis is as important to music as color is to painting. Ptolemy in 140 AD would be the first to define the interval with a ratio of 46 to 45. I mean, heck, the interval even made an appearance in the world's first music dictionary. And yes, I have a copy of the world's first music dictionary. Although, all these guys were probably speaking about the beauty and importance of this interval in mathematical terms, rather than, say, the beauty of the diesis relation to the tonic. Because, well, stack a few diesis on top of each other, and you're left with this. But by ordering them in sequence until we hit the octave, we can construct the chromatic 31 scale and then build hauntingly beautiful chords like this.